the beach. It's gonna be great to hang out on the beach and do nothing. We used to come every summer when we were kids. Wow, their vacation that was home. A long time ago. Look at his hair, I just noticed. Is it gonna go full circle? Is it gonna end with him in a ponytail knot again? It's just so weird after all we've been through and after all Azula has done, like killing Aang, that we're now like on their group's vacation, just kind of hanging out. There's no air of evil just going to my summer home. Who are these two beautiful women? Oh no. Can't you tell? It's Lo and me. I did not need that. Ember Island is a magical place. Even these ladies, you know, we've seen them be so sinister. They're so cool. They're like, enjoy your time on Ember Island. Ember? Ember? Ember Island. And it can help you understand yourselves and each other. Wow, that's really what this is. This is self-discovery and exploration for Zuko, Azula, and friends. That's really cool. Time to hit the beach! Oh, that scared me so bad. I thought, I don't know what I thought. Do you really think you should be exposing yourself like that? Cover up! What? I'm wearing trunks. We got two groups, two summer vacations. Hey, you need some help unpacking? Sure. <laughs> Thanks. I love this. This is so good. Is she jealous? Could you scooch just a little bit more to that? <laughs> She's a little bit manipulative herself, huh? I saw it and I thought it was pretty. Don't girls like stuff like this? Uh, maybe stupid girls. <laughs> Forget it! This is so pretty. Not as pretty as you are. I don't know. I don't. I, what, I, I'm so confused. Am I really watching the villains of the show have a little beach vacation? Hey, beach bums. We're playing next. Ty Lee, get over here now! That's pretty dramatic. See that girl with the silly pigtails? When she runs toward the ball, there's just the slightest hesitation of her left foot. Keep serving the ball to her left and we'll destroy her and the rest of her team. Is that necessary though? I feel like these people are so athletic. They don't need to strategize like that. Yeah, I mean, forget the left side. <laughs> yes! We defeated you for all time! You will never <laughs> rise from the ashes of your shame and humiliation! Wow. That was, that was fun. fun. I'm having a party tonight. You should come by. You don't know who we are, do you? Don't you know who we are? We're Chan and Ron John. Oh, yeah. Chan and Ron John? <gasps> I feel like I've been each one of these people in this episode at some point, at some time. For once, I just wanted to see how people would treat us if they didn't know who we were. I'm like terrified for these people at this party because Azula is not someone that generally people will like. So she's in for kind of a rude awakening if she thinks she's gonna get the same treatment as a commoner that she does as the princess. For us at least, this is Azula's first time getting world exposure. And so she's gonna be in a completely different value system where if you strip away that divine birthright thing, which seems to be the backbone of her world outlook, she really is just someone who hasn't developed a lot of the things that most people value. So my guess is that this is not gonna go well, this party for her. To the party! Are they going? We are the perfect party guests. We arrive right on time because we are very punctual. Yikes. That's a sharp outfit, Chan. You could puncture the hull of an Empire-class Fire Nation battleship, leaving thousands to drown at sea. Because it's so sharp. It hurts. It hurts. You like him, don't you? Ugh. So insecure. That just makes things so much worse. Which one of us do you like? I don't know! I don't know! I guess they all just like me too much. Come on, oh. Tylee. You can't be this ignorant. Those boys only like you because you make it so easy for them. Oh, no. I know Azula is really manipulative of her friends, but this time it actually feels like she's manipulating herself because she's trying to find valid reasons why the boys are out for Tylee and not her without having to make certain negative observations about herself. For me, and I think for a lot of other people as well, it's always attractive when you meet someone who knows who they are and who doesn't seem to have any pretense about their behavior and their interaction with you. Azula's claim that the guys like Tylee because they think she's easy there might be some truth to that but I think more than that they're attracted to her nature which is that she's carefree and she's fun and part of the reason that she's fun is that she creates the space for others to join in and interact with her in a way that's that's playful and they can be themselves and kind of explore the interaction without being guarded and wondering what is this person's angle what do they want I have to be careful what I say I got to be careful what I do you know nobody wants that people flow downhill in a sense we want to have interactions that are fun it's not like they actually care who you are <laughs> oh that's not true at all I didn't mean what I said maybe I just said it because I was a little jealous Wow, I'm surprised she said that. You're the most beautiful, smartest, perfect girl in the world. Aw. For some reason, when I meet boys, they act as if I'm going to do something horrible to them. Because she is. But you probably would do something yeah. horrible to them. Just look at him and smile a lot and laugh at everything he says. Let's try it. 
Okay, how do you like it in this party? <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. I have nothing to say. I'm just laughing at it. Buy me some food. Sure. Ah, uh, teen love. It's a great place. If you like sand. <laughs> yeah, it's like, welcome to Sandyland. <laughs> what the heck? You and I will be the strongest couple in the entire world. We will dominate the Earth. <laughs> I like that shot. That was nice. Uh oh. Hey, watch it! That food was for my cranky girlfriend. <laughs> I like how he went out of his way to call her cranky. Oh, we got some competition. Stop talking to my girlfriend. That just makes things so much worse. What is wrong with you? You have no passion for anything. You're just a big blah. It's over, Zuko. It's interesting he went back to that place and looked at his childhood photos because in a way it's like he's looking for the thing he lost thinking that his father loved him and when his mother was still alive and it's a desire to go back to that innocence because at that time he was free to be a happy kid and he hasn't had that ever since then. It's amazing how so many things in this show directly correlate with things I've, I'm experiencing in my life. Part of that is just that it's a really good show that deals with very human concepts. But my sister just found a collection of family pictures that I had put together on a CD when I was in high school. And looking back at it, I realized I took so many things for granted then. You know, the, the nice peaceful life that you have as a kid, you just think that's the default state of things. I remember at that time I was so dissatisfied and I wanted to get out into the world and like have adventure and all those things. I don't regret that. I think I was following my heart, but I also wish I had taken a moment back then to actually Really appreciate how good I had it and to be aware of the fact that those things weren't permanent. It's easy to get stuck in that and you know long for the past and to dwell on that and that's not my intention. I think the lesson for me in that is just to be grateful for the time that I had and to use that as a reminder to be grateful for what I have right now because things are always temporary and part of growing up and growing into yourself is moving on and leaving things behind and, and making sacrifices. I think the lesson from that is just to have perspective on the moment you're in and to appreciate it for what it is without clinging to it too strongly. Guys. You're all gonna think I'm crazy, but it feels like a metal man is coming. Oh, but we can bed metal, so we're good. What was that? Is this a mind bender? Wow. I said this guy up nicely to be really powerful. So much has changed. Come down to the beach with me. Come on. This place is depressing. Yeah, she does care about him. I'm convinced. Where's your new boyfriend? Don't be stupid. Are you cold? Nah, it doesn't work. Because he's already thrown away his dignity, so you can't then try to be, like, you know, a protector. Jump on Alpha! I'll try to distract him! At least you can hear him coming. Nice. Good stuff. I feel like this is the wrong solution. What are you doing? It's a painting of your family. You think I care? I think you do. Yeah. Circus freak. <laughs> At least I'm different now. Circus freak is a compliment. Yeah, they have Tylee all wrong. It's not that she's simple, it's that she's just come to a healthy place. You couldn't get enough attention when you were a kid, so you're trying to make up for it now. They're all just jealous. You were an only child for 15 years, but even with all of that attention, your aura is this dingy, pasty, gray... I'm sorry I can't be as high, strong, and crazy as the rest of you. I'm sorry too. Wow, they're just they're letting it all out. The old ladies were right. They got a lot of issues to deal with. I was a rich only child who got anything I wanted, as long as I behaved. And didn't speak unless spoken to. You want me to express myself? Leave uh -oh. me alone! This is nuts. My life hasn't been that easy either, May. Yeah. That doesn't excuse the way you've been acting. Ugh. I don't know, this is stressing me out a little bit. It's just too much information at once. I'm angrier than ever and I don't know why! Who are you angry at? I'm angry at myself! There you go. Have a breakdown. I'm not sure I know the difference between right and wrong anymore. I care about you. This is so chaotic. I can't keep up with it. I can't react to it in real time. My own mother thought I was a monster. Oh wow, here's some reckoning from Azula. She was right, of course, but it still hurt. The beach did help us learn about ourselves. You know what would make this trip really memorable? Burning down the party house. We've got some bad news, Chan. This is a weird way to end this episode. 
I don't know. I don't know. That was weird. Okay, so I'm a little bit overwhelmed by this episode, but let me try to summarize some of my thoughts on this. First of all, I really respect the creators of the show for making this episode because it's kind of a risk. It's very unusual to have your villain have like a slice of life day. It's so humanizing, it's wonderful, but it's a brave choice to do that. My theories about Azula keep getting more and more substantiated as I watch the show. I think she's very smart. I don't think she's illogically evil. I think she has good qualities. I just think her value system has just been shaped by her environment. She does show compassion. I mean, the, the moment where she grabbed Zuko and brought him down to the beach, what was that if not compassion? She had no angle there. It also gave me the sense that she needs her friends a little bit. She kind of leaned on them there. Last point about Azula, I think it's really cool that she showed some vulnerability. She was put in a situation where she couldn't command. She couldn't control. It's endearing. Next, Ty Lee, I think out of the four of them, she's the one I would most like to hang out with. And I think most people would feel the same way for reasons I've discussed a little bit already. She is the healthiest. And I think it's a mistake to characterize that health as ditziness or stupidity or easiness. What I actually think it is, is a sign of a very strong-minded person who found the will to create a positive outlook and good disposition, which is very difficult. I mean, how many people are capable of that? And I don't think she's blind to things. I think that she just lets things go that are out of her control. For me, it seems like she may have had trouble forming her own identity because her parents are somewhat oppressive. Her way of framing things is why bother? There's a sour grapes element to her approach to life where she can't get what she needs out of the world. So she just determines that it's not really worth it. But it's not because she actually feels that deep down, but because she's she just doesn't know how to get that and so she's protecting herself from having to make those painful steps out into the world and form her own identity and get what she wants from it. And that's partly why being with Tylee would be so much more fun because Tylee is constructive whereas May is destructive. Tylee will have fun with things and May will just tell you why they're stupid and nobody wants that. It's not fun. You have to spend so much energy trying to figure out how to navigate in that and tiptoe around their attitude because whatever you put in front of them, they're going to strike it down. You can't be vulnerable around those kind of people. You can't be honest around those kinds of people. You always have to be very cognizant of what you're saying and it's it's tiring. It's tiresome. So that's why Tylee has so much more gravitational force than May. I've spoken a lot about Zuko in the past. His struggle is figuring out exactly who he is, who the real Zuko is and what he actually wants. What are his values? I like the scene where he's looking at the pictures because that's kind of a, him remembering innocence, longing for the past when he didn't have to make these difficult choices. What's cool about this episode is that it seems like he actually took some responsibility for it. For most of us, when we turn an eye on our past and we become aware of things that made us who we are or things that negatively impacted us, our first reaction is to go to blame. It's their fault. If only they hadn't done this to me, if only they had said this, or if only they'd given me that, or if only I had been told this lesson early, right? You can drive yourself crazy thinking like that. But if you forgive them for that, and you realize that these are just things that you've picked up that maybe you don't need to hold on to anymore, or if you understand that things are in your hands and that you can find a way to proceed in a way that's healthy for you, then suddenly I feel like that makes things so much more, more actionable. It's kind of a relief to let those things go. When you let it, you just let go that these people messed me up. You know, I, I was so messed up as a kid. To see that and to maybe, maybe even grieve for it, but to come to terms with it allows you to go to that next plateau where you're like, okay, I can see where I came from. I can see how I got here, but I would like to continue forward in a healthier way. So I think that was a big move for Zuko finally admitting that he's angry at himself. He has every right to be angry at his parents, but it's kind of neither here nor there. I mean, the past is the past. His father is his father. He's not going to change his father, but he can make choices for himself that end up creating a better life for himself. That episode made me a little bit uncomfortable. Not because it was bad. I think it was a great episode, but because I sympathize very strongly with elements of each of them. I think they all represent parts of the human and teenage experience that are very relatable, but also kind of painful, painful to look at. It's embarrassing to think about yourself that way, like, oh yeah, I was like that. I respect them making that choice to do that kind of episode. It's unusual. I can't think of anything like that I've ever seen. All right, shall we go to the next one maybe? What do you think?